Hello everybody, um, just thought I would give you a photography idea that you could try if you're stuck at home. If you're living in the UK then today is the first day of what's kind of like a lockdown really, where only uh, the most essential reasons for going out are allowed. So basically most of us are going to have a fair bit of time stuck indoors. So I thought I'd try a little photography idea that hopefully pretty much everybody would be able to have a go at. You can then adapt it, come up with your own versions. Um, you don't have to do it exactly as I'm doing it. What I'm going to do is something really, really simple. Um, so it's assuming you don't have any real equipment at all. It's assuming you don't have studio lights. It's just something really easy that you can try using stuff that hopefully you've got sitting around at home. Uh, hi there, thanks for watching. I'm just going to show you in a moment a quick demo of a technique where you can use household objects just to create a simple photo. Now you'll notice that there's some blackout stuff behind me and that's quite simply because I'm filming this during the daytime and it's a lot easier to do this when the room is dark. Okay, So if you want to get an easier effect, do it in the evening. If you do it during the daytime you need to have blackout blinds or something just to try and keep the light out because we're going to be working on the tripod uh, or working on, on a table and we don't want the light from all around us interfering with the photograph. So what you can hopefully see a little bit behind me, I've just got a table here with some fruit down on it. And what I'm going to show you how to create, very simply, it's just some like still lifestyle images using this setup. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, but here's one that I just did on the camera. It's looking a bit nasty on the camera compared to what it really is. Uh, the phone's not picking it up very easily. So I will post a version of that later on so you can see what it actually looks like. And um, it's a very simple idea. All you need for this is something to photograph. Fruit and veg is a nice easy one. Hopefully we've all got some of that at home. Glossier subjects with, that reflect things more are a bit more difficult, but you can try it and you'll find out what the problems can be. Technically you need a torch and you need something that's going to soften the light from the torch. Now when we're dealing with studio lights we often have big lights with soft boxes and stuff like that. You can soften the light uh, from your torch using something very very simple that you can find most of the time around the house and sometimes you even chuck away. Plastic bags. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit stupid but a white plastic bag, yeah don't use a bright orange one or a blue one because the light coming through will then go orange or blue but if you use a white plastic bag and put your torch inside that, it softens the light so that you don't get as harsh a light on your subject. If you do it with the torch directly, it really does tend to look very harsh and not very pleasant. What we're trying to emulate is like a sort of a soft window light almost. Okay. Uh, if you don't for some reason have a white plastic bag, other things that you could try perhaps would be uh, a not too dense white t-shirt, a sheet, uh, again make sure that it's, it's white, um, not another colour. In terms of your torch, if you've got a very powerful torch, you'll need to have it a little bit further away and you'll probably need something a bit thicker to soften the light. If you've got a very small sort of pen torch or maybe even using the, uh, the torch on your mobile phone, you'll be, you'll be able to be a bit closer to it and uh, you might only need something quite thin. If you are a, a photographer used to working in studio and you have some studio kit, then a great thing that you can use for this is the inside of a 5-in-1 reflector, um, which when you take it out looks like this. So that's the inside with the gold and the black and the silver bits removed. And you can just shine the torch through that uh, to soften it. Okay, so we need a torch. We need something to shine it through just to soften it, so something that's white. So plastic bag, which is what I shall be using in a moment. See, just to prove it, just a basic shopping bag, nothing exciting at all. And something to photograph, so your fruit or your veg, something like that. I'm putting it straight onto this table because it looks quite nice. Uh, it's got a nice little wooden table. Uh, you could use a chopping board if you don't have a uh, table that you think looks pretty, if you've got something that's a bit plain. You could use something like a wooden chopping board. Um, uh, a floor tile perhaps, that sort of thing, to give a more interesting looking background. And then I've got my camera set up on a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, then you might be able to put like a little stack of books just on the table 
to the side of your subject that you're going to shoot so that you can get your camera up a little bit and so that it's sitting solid. You can theoretically do this with a mobile phone camera as well, but you will need something to hold that camera still for a few seconds. So some kind of a little tripod. If you don't have that, if you're using a normal camera, either put it on the tripod or put it on top of like a stack of books or something so that you can get the camera up a little bit and then pointing ever so slightly down towards your subjects on the table. Okay, um, for the geeky ones out there, if you want to know what lenses I'm using, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, for this particular one, I happen to have my 45mm on the camera at the moment. Um, a basic 50mm portrait lens is fine. The kind of lens that comes with your camera normally is fine. You don't need anything special for this. We're not going in super close, so you don't even need a macro lens. If you have something like an 18 to 55 mil, which is the sort of thing that normally comes uh, with your camera when you buy it, put it more towards the 55 mil perhaps, and that will help just to shrink down the area you're looking at. You won't get in all sorts of bits from the rest of the room that you don't really want. Uh, so you don't need any fancy kit for that. A uh, useful thing to be able to do with your camera is um, put it on a timer. Uh, you may need to check your manual how to do that, but it's again, it's not absolutely essential. Um, it's just so that we can set it off and then walk away from it and get going. Uh, I use a cable which has got a little button on it that you just press the button on, on the cable and that sets it off. That works nice, nicely as well. Settings for the camera. Okay, so we need a bit of time to do this because we're going to be painting with the light. We need a few seconds to actually move the torch around uh, to create our light source to light our subjects up. It's not something which you can do in like one two hundredth of a second or something. So we need a longer uh, exposure. So you're going to put your camera into manual mode. Even if you've never done this before, don't worry. It's not that difficult. It's not that bad. Put the camera into manual mode and put the ISO down to about 100. And then you can choose your um, aperture around about something like f8 and f or f9. That gives you a reasonable amount of the image that's going to be in focus throughout. So ISO nice and low at 100. Uh, your aperture around about f8, f, I think I'm shooting at f9 there. And then in terms of the amount of time that you need, it's going to depend partly on how light your room is. Because what we're aiming to do is get rid of the ambient room light and just create the light using our torch. So that's why it's a lot easier to do in the evening when it's already dark. Um, if you can have the shutter open for maybe 10 seconds without getting loads of ambient light on the image, then uh, that makes it an awful lot easier to paint more deliberately rather than just wiggling the torch around and hoping for the best. You can do it in a five second exposure, but the, the quicker it becomes, just gets that bit more difficult to be accurate with it. So ideally you want around about a 10 second exposure. Okay, if you find out that your light is, uh, is coming too bright off your torch, just move it away or diffuse it a little bit more. Hi David, thank you for dropping in. Uh, I'm just explaining how I'm going to show you a very simple uh, still life photography setup that anybody can do at home using a white plastic bag, a household torch, setting their camera up ready for the, to take the photo and I've just got some fruit and veg on the table. So it's the sort of thing that hopefully everybody has got lying around at home so you can all have a go and we can all uh, give each other ideas as to how we can uh, improve on our images afterwards as well. So we're nearly there, I'm just going to take a, a, a show you how I'm going to take the images in just a second. So just to recap then, we're going to have my torch in a plastic bag, white plastic bag to diffuse it. If you've got a stronger torch, you might need something a bit thicker. You may need to double over at the bag or something like that to soften that light down. Make sure your camera is fixed steady. Uh, you need the room dark enough so that you could take a photo for about five seconds without really being able to see your subject. Okay, settings, ISO 100, F9, and then about five to ten seconds to leave the shutter open for you to do it. Okay, well that's enough of you watching me go blah blah blah. Let's actually show you the technique so that you can see how it's going to work. So I'm just using a, a basic little LED torch 
Nothing particularly fancy there at all. We, sh uh, we should all have something like that lying around at home. If you've got one of those massive, great big industrial torches that will light the other end of a football pitch, probably better to get something a little bit less powerful. Otherwise, you might need to stand out the other end of the garden and shine it in through the window. Anyhow, little torch. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Could even be the light off your phone, perhaps. Uh, this particular one enables you to zoom in and out with it. Pfft, who cares? The idea is that if I just... I'm just going to turn the light off so that you can see what the torch is doing a little bit more. Uh, make that a little bit more obvious. So I'm going to do it without any kind of, sort of softening going on. Oh, you probably can't see the table too well there. I probably better just tip the, uh, tip the screen down a bit more so you can see the table a little bit better. Uh, where are we? There, you can see the table better now, can't you? In the middle? Yeah. Okay, right, so lights off, so this is going to be your dark room in the evening, yes I am still here, if I pop my torch on, my torch has an annoying habit of uh, going between being direct light and flashing when I turn it on and off. Now you can see my torch beam here on the subject as I move it around, yeah, quite sort of contrasty. What I'm going to do is take the plastic bag Put the torch just inside the top, so we're going to keep the bag fairly sort of large surface area that we're looking to create. So you can see it like that. We now have a glowing bag, and then as I move that in nearer the table, you see we get less of a hot spot on our subject. Yeah, if you look at what's going on here, look at the fruit and veg, look at the light that's on that, and then compare it with this. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Okay. Yeah, so it's very harsh light if you use the uh, torch on its own. It's not going to be very smooth looking, it's just going to give you a very, very harsh sort of light and shadow. So what we're doing then is just putting the torch just inside that white plastic bag to create a bigger light, which gives you a softer light over your subject like that, okay? It does cut the power of the light, as you can see but it does enable us to create a much softer looking light source. So what I'm going to do now is just set the camera off and uh, I will do one without the plastic bag first of all. You can watch where the, the torch beam is going from. In, you can just experiment with this. You can put the light wherever you want, but imagine you've got a window off to one side and the light's coming in the window. So if I start it off, uh, I've unplugged this, the switch. Just a second. I'll put the light back on just so you don't get freaked out by staring at a black screen. Let me just plug my switch back in. There we go. Okay. So, I'm now going to start that off and I'm going to do a little bit of light painting with the bare torch. So here I am painting with the torch. You'll notice that the light is skipping about a bit. The reason for that is if I hold it still, I just get one really hot spot, and that doesn't look very nice. Um, let me just grab the camera, let's have a look and see if I can show you on the screen here. These will be easier for you to see when I post them later. Um, but So here, let's see, is that going to work for you? No, that's all blown out and nasty. That is holding it still, which as you can see is very blown out and very nasty. And that there, moving it around. And you've just fallen down. <laughs> oh dear, never play with technology, eh? So what you want to do is that exact same idea, playing around with... ...with uh, softening that light a bit more, because you don't want it to be as hard as that, clearly. Okay, let me just straighten this phone up. I don't want that to keep falling down. No, apologies for this. I'll leave it. There we go. Okay, so I'll put the camera back on to the tripod. I'm just going to grab my torch and my plastic bag. Torch just inside the bag. So I've now got that ready. I'll pop the light off on here. And now I'm going to start the exposure on the camera. I'm going to paint around, again, keeping it moving. Don't hold it too still for too long. Don't put it right in front of the lens, obviously. And that will give us a much 
softer look to it. So, again, let's have a look and see if I can show this to you. You should at least be able to see there's not as many hot spots as before. You can see that's coming up much more evenly. Okay? Much more even than this, for example. Like even if I get that in close, you'll see it's still it's not, it's not able to balance that on the screen. Whereas this one, which I've just painted, there you can see it's much more balanced. It's a much softer light. As I say, I'll post some examples of that as actual images in the group in a little while, so that you can see them a bit better. But hopefully, you get the idea uh, that just softening a light like that makes a huge, huge difference. And you don't need big fancy kit. You can do it with just a torch and a plastic bag. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, please do drop them in the comments. Um, if you've got any questions now while I'm still on, then please do ask. So just to recap again, the kit that you need, you need your camera mounted on something to keep it still, uh, preferably a tripod. If you haven't got one, put it on a stack of books or something. You need a subject. In this case here, I've just got a bit of fruit on there. And... Uh, you know, an interesting table, or if you haven't got one of those, like a tile or a wooden chopping board, something that just looks a little bit more interesting than just a, a white tabletop or something like that. Okay, and the lighting equipment is this incredibly sophisticated torch and white plastic bag. Wrap the torch just inside the plastic bag so that you create like a large, big sort of soft box it is almost like that. So that's your light source. It's now much, much bigger than just that little thing. And it's making it into a big light source that helps to soften the light, to soften those shadows down, to give you a much more even looking image. Okay, is that all making sense? Um, other than the fact that I made a pillock of myself by throwing the phone on the floor a minute ago. Any other questions at all? Any other observations? Um, I'll leave. I'll put the video up um, for you to watch. Watch back if you missed the the live when I've gone through everything, and uh, just encourage you to have a go. Uh, see see how it goes for you. Easier to do in the evening, as I said, when it's dark. You haven't got to have these blackout things like I've got here. Easier to do it in the evening, and uh, choose whatever subject you want. Keep it simple. Try the technique out. If it's too bright, use a less powerful torch or diffuse it more, put a thicker material in front of it. If it's not bright enough, then you may need to uh, put less material in front of it um, or potentially have the uh, shutter open for a little bit longer, so 10 seconds instead of 5 seconds. Okay, so it's, it's all about cutting out the ambient light, creating our own light using that very simple torch and plastic bag. Okay, so no need for any, anything expensive. Um, if you don't have the torch, use your, use your phone uh, light on there if you need to. Um, I will sign off in just a sec, so if you do have any questions, if, if there's anything that you're still not quite sure about, uh, do ask now or pop them in the comments later and we'll see what we can do. I would really like to see what you can come up with. What have you got stuck at home with that you could photograph that might be interesting like that? So it needs to be something that's gonna sit still. So children and pets, mm, could be tricky. Um, might work if they're asleep, perhaps, but, but I would suggest using something you know is not going to move, um, pop that down on the table, and something you know is not going to mind having a torch shone at it. So keep it simple, have a go, see what you get. If you're not getting the right results, uh, drop a, 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 or the results that you're expecting, drop a, a note in the comments, and we'll all see if we can help you to find ways of improving it because I'd like to see what kind of ideas you lot come up with and we can refine this technique further and we can look to do other things with it. Something that any of us can do stuck here at home. So hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching the video and uh, please do watch the, the replay of the video if you've missed uh, how to do this. And I'll also be posting those demo pictures so you can see the massive difference. So grab your torch and your plastic bag and some fruit and away you go.